I was pulling stuff out and he was like, what are you doing? And I was like, I'm, <laughs> I'm reworking, I'm remodeling, okay? Yeah. I'm like, it's gonna be good. I'm like, I promise you. Some of the engineers will come through my section and they're like, we know a woman's in the shop because everything's labeled and organized. <laughs> and I laugh at that and I'm like, it's about you know effectiveness and productivity, right? The application period for Nuts, Bolts, and Thingamajigs 2024 Spring Scholarships is now open. All full-time students pursuing two- or four-year degrees leading to a career in manufacturing are welcome to apply. For details and eligibility requirements, please visit nutsandboltsfoundation.org. Hello, this is Dan Davis of The Fabricator Magazine, joined by Darla Welton of Brown Dog Welding, of Steel Building America series on thefabricator.com. Yes. And uh, <laughs> I don't want to say partner, <laughs> wife, partner, and friend. I'm trying to make a joke, and now I'm screwing that up. Uh, of John Welton, our Josh friend. Josh Welton. <laughs> Josh, Josh Welton. Uh, maybe I should just try to do this with as few words as possible. God, who is John uh, Welton? John Welton. <laughs> I got nothing for yeah, it. Yeah, all right. He's the inventor of Detroit-style pizza. <laughs> uh, so we're in Novi, Michigan, taping this. And before we get into a conversation with Jessica Considine, a uh, young welder who uh, has really kind of like found her place yeah. in uh, the metal fabricating industry. And it's just kind of fun how uh, she's gone about uh, creating a career for herself. And yeah. uh, the thing that really struck me incredibly mature for being somebody in their 20s and you know the more conversations you have with these people you just feel i feel inadequate that at, when i was their age i was such a just a just a loose piece of humanity <laughs> with no with no real wow no real like idea of what i should be doing other than going home and drinking beer and watching tv uh so i i don't know i it's uh one of the things you have these conversations and you know, she'll mention in the interview her uh, desire to set boundaries. You know, yes. like, yeah, you know, I weld for a living. I'm not welding. I, the welding I'm doing outside of work will be for me. And I don't know. I just never had that, you know, drive or understanding. Just, you know, working with people is something that and I think I got wise to the world at age like 45 or something <laughs> like that. And that's not a good so thing. So maybe it's so, finally going to happen for me this year. Yeah, right. <laughs> <laughs> I'm not going to lie. I really do feel like I've reached a certain level of maturity. <laughs> yeah, so congratulations yeah. on this uh, moment. Keep me in loop, but I don't know. Like, where was your head space when you were in your 20s? Oh, my gosh. I mean, Josh and I got married really young. So we were just young married people. We moved to California and, you know, spent every last dime we have. Going out, you know, hanging out with our friends, going to comedy shows. We were at the improv all the time and um, just having fun being, you know, young 20-somethings yeah. who weren't totally sure what we wanted to do. Josh was working in construction. He was working for our friend. I was, um, <laughs> I was actually a tutor at an all-boys group home. Uh, they were all high school boys, and I had the time of my life. Sounds like actually. a CW show. <laughs> uh, yeah, it was a little wild, and but the kids were great, and they looked forward to me coming. But I was just like, well, clearly, working in boys' group homes is not something I'm going to do in my entire life. So I was still trying to figure it out for sure. Yeah, yeah, yeah. and yeah, I'm sure like change will come in uh, Jessica's life as well, but. Yeah, I, I think I'm with you in terms of like the 20s are just kind of about existing and just kind of taking yeah. advantage of both youth and what, what little money we did have. Exactly. Gareth, you were, in, you were a journalism major, so I don't know there's a ton yeah, of money. Yeah, so I was just making bad stories. decisions left and right. <laughs> <laughs> Getting a journalism degree and working in the newspapers. So yeah, I was also very poor. There you <laughs> go. <laughs> yes. But I'm sure it built character. Yeah, character. Right. There you go. That's there you the go. nicest way to put it. Building Some of my character. favorite meals are yeah. character. Yeah. I love character-filled meals. I wasn't, you know, figuring out how to use a press break like Jessica was. Yeah. <laughs> I yeah. would just be overwhelmed and snap off my fingers. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> but it was her focus, right? So she went from jewelry to saying, oh, wait, I could actually apply this elsewhere and use yeah. some of these skills and try something new. And, you know, this could forge this career path for me. I just didn't have that sort yeah. of 
I maybe vision. kids are smarter. I don't know. I'm yeah. I'm okay with saying that. I know some people get kind of like, oh no, we had Hanna Barbera cartoons. We're much smarter. <laughs> <laughs> kids are smarter. Yeah, <laughs> there you go. Uh, with that uh, in mind, let's just move on to the conversation with Jessica. Uh, we think you'll enjoy this, and uh, stay tuned. Goodbye. Bonsoir. Thank you. Bonsoir. Thank you. <laughs> this episode of The Fabricator Podcast is brought to you by FMA. The FMA Bookstore offers a variety of resources aimed at increasing your knowledge in metal fabrication and manufacturing. Featuring over 500 titles, including Spanish language materials, the bookstore is curated to provide practical instruction and a deeper understanding of the industry. Whether you're a beginner or an experienced professional, the FMA Bookstore has all the resources you need. To explore the bookstore, visit fmamfg.org. And now, back to the episode. Welcome back to the Fabricator Podcast. I'm Dan Davis with the Fabricator Magazine. I'm joined by Darla Welton of Brown Dog Welding and a good friend, wife, partner <laughs> of, of Josh Welton. You uh, we are good, good friends. friends indeed. It's true. Yeah. It's true. Well, like, yeah, we, we learned about their uh, story about how they met earlier today. Which I think will probably be a separate podcast at some point. Right. But uh, we're in the uh, <laughs> suburbs of Detroit uh, today in uh, Novi, Michigan, and our guest is uh, Jessica Considine. Uh, <laughs> she is uh, the creative force behind Sculpted Roots, uh, welding artist, but also full time fabricator. Yep, full time fabricator okay. for yeah. the Department of Defense now. Oh wow! She yeah. just got a new job. So yeah. yeah. So I mean, uh, yeah. How long? How long's the new gig? It's only been, been two on? months. So it's like super new to me. I came from custom fabrication, so I'm like in a whole new like field and industry, right? Yeah. Like going into now building prototype military trucks. Wow. Yeah. So how's that? How's that dynamic compare between the two oh, metal fabricating environments? It's been really slow these first two months because we're gearing up for it to be really aggressive. Yeah. Um, so I feel like I don't have a good representation just yet. Like it's very chill in the shop, and my yeah. boss is like, you know what? These next couple months, once we start, you know, these like three builds that we have going on, we're gonna be on overtime. We're gonna be working really hard. So like, just chill, get the shop to what you want right now. Right. And then be prepared for that. So because you're kind of the shop, like the shop lead. Yeah, I'm the only welder fabricator there. So oh, it's, wow. yeah, it's just me. Yeah. So I came from a position that I was an only welder fabricator there as well. Um, other than you know the assistant plant managers, and they were in my position at some point, but have had moved up. So mm -hmm. I took their position. So um, yeah, it's kind of funny. I, I'm a solo once again. You know, but I I work with a lot of like heavy duty mechanics. Um, so those are like, those are my main coworkers for the yeah. most part. So is that dynamic, uh, like you get specific build prints that you have to put together or is it kind of like, Hey, we need this. How does that, uh, where, where's the input coming in terms of what you work on? Yeah. So what I've seen so far from like my short stint there, um, it's been, I'm doing a lot of modifications to already built trucks, uh -huh. you know, that I wasn't a part right. of. So they'll go into like testing out in different, um, like cities and states and stuff. Um, however, that is, it's really based off of like the contracts that they get. Um, and then they'll come back and say, hey, this is this is what failed and this is what needs to be fixed and we need to re rework it. So I've gotten a lot more prints in that aspect. Um, I'm gearing up to do three builds um, from the ground up. So I'm not really sure what that's gonna be like. I'm assisting a lot in things, right? Like I'll, I'll be welding a lot of stuff, but I think the mechanics will use me and they're, um, their aspects as well, whatever they need when they're, you know, short on hands. So, which I don't have a lot of mechanical experience in that way. So I'm kind of excited for that because it just like adds another skill right. right onto me. Oh, absolutely. How big is the the shop or the company? Is it a smaller? No, so it's actually a pretty big um, company. It's Navistar Defense. Okay. So like they're the biggest manufacturers of like Max Pros, which are um, war defense vehicles, basically, especially like they're, they were built for, um, like explosions to withstand those and not have any fatalities. Um, but they've kind of become a little bit more used for everyday use. 
um, for the guys in the military and whatnot. So um, yeah, my understanding with them is that they're they're pretty large. And so we're just the prototyping shop, but our actual manufacturing facility is out in Mississippi and there's like 600 employees there. Oh, wow. Yeah. There's, Interesting. Yeah, there's 300 welders and then it goes from, you know, shop managers to engineers to purchasers. So you're really kind of creating the WPS for some of these yeah. uh, jobs. Yeah, right? that's what it kind of feels like so far. Yeah. Um, and I'm waiting to get my certification specifically in flux core on armored steel. Yeah. So I think they'll send me down in Mississippi because most of those guys, because right. they are manufacturing all of these, you know, um, heavy duty trucks that um, most of them are certified for. Wow. Yeah. So those guys, I think their CWIs are more based out of there yeah. instead of my shop where. Do you I, have a lot of experience with that armored plate type? No, material? I have no experience. Oh, nope. Wow. I have no experience. Honestly, was just looking through the previous guy who had worked there. I was looking through his notes and his books and I found some like WPSs from like 2008. And I was like, you know what? I'm going to go based off of them. I was yeah. like, I don't have any other, like, I don't have any more, right. like, um, newer editions of them. So I was, like, just practicing and gearing up for that moment that I get to, you know, go down there, down there and certify. Um, yeah, that's what I'm basing it off of. And honestly, just a little bit of research, you know. Yeah. So I've learned that much. And I know that for armored steel, because it's just so hardened that it needs to be um, preheated right. to a certain temperature. And I think that's, like, the main thing with it is that it has to be preheated. Yeah. Now I feel kind of useless because I feel like if Josh was here, you guys would just go at this conversation because obviously that's a big part of what Josh does yeah. in his job. And uh, he's not here because he's getting new mill certs right now. So, okay, nice. Yeah, so he's down in Lima, Ohio doing that. Oh, okay. <laughs> yeah. yeah. And, uh, I, just a plug. I mean, uh, Josh and uh, Darley may, may have helped put those uh, blog entries together, but when he was over in Iraq, kind of doing some work mm -hmm. on site that was uh, that was pretty good reads but yeah oh, i yeah. mean yeah there's definitely some one person missing from this conversation <laughs> yes. probably should be here <laughs> to maximize okay. the enjoyment i'm still so new to it and i'm learning slowly but surely about it right like i'm i'm more involved with the engineering aspect yeah. um just talking to the engineers pretty consistently you know about because like they they understand what their previous builds have been but now yeah. we're going into new ones like new type of trucks so they're like what is feasible? Like, will this work? Can this like boss work for this? You know, right. um, and so it's interesting in that way. I don't think at my last job I wasn't so involved with the engineers. Right. So it's a, it's a, it's very new for me like that. Oh, what a great opportunity! Yeah, I love it. Yeah. So I'll ask the question. I end up asking not only people guests on here, but like people I meet at other companies because you know metal fabricating. You run into you know, you forget everything gets made and you're like, you're the people who make that? And so <laughs> did, did you think you would end up doing a job like this at one time? No, I I really didn't have an interest in the military like industry. I didn't really think that's where I was going because my first job was custom fabrication and I had stayed there for three years. Yeah. And I just was outgrowing the work that they were doing. So I just started looking for new jobs and it ended up the my interview, my first interview with them, the shop manager was just so enthusiastic and he was so fun. And like, it just like, he made me feel very welcomed and already like I had the job, even though, you know, right. there were other candidates still there. And it just seemed really cool. And it was better pay, you know, yeah. out of all the jobs that I had applied for and had gotten offers for, it was the best pay. So I was like, I'm just gonna do it. Yeah, no. You know, and just try it. What number job is this in your career? This is two. Okay. All right. I yeah. just wanted to get a timeline yeah, going here in my two. head. Yeah. All right. So I, um, this April was my, this is like my three year mark being okay. a welder fabricator in the industry. Awesome. Yeah. So, so background. Um, my background, basically, I actually started off as a jeweler um, and then I kind of worked my way into metal sculpting. And then I was a really bad welder. I liked fabricating and I liked being creative, but I was like, I really am bad at welding, you know, and I wanted to do fine art. So I decided to go into the welding program and it just like opened up a lot of avenues for me and opportunities that I realized like I could make a full career out of it, you know, and have my own welding shop and make my art on the side or do whatever I wanted, you know, but right. I was like to get into the industry, I saw that it was going to be an advantage for me, like whether I took it, you know, far within like the welding industry or I took it into my art. Right. Wow. Yeah. It really flips the script sometimes. Most people start out on kind of the right. the, the, the business, not business, but metal fabricating, custom fab, as you mentioned, kind of work their 
way to the art for creative outlet, but you kind of started uh, backwards a little bit. Yeah, and like, so I, I did jewelry classes in high school and I really enjoyed it. And I looked for like, you know, art colleges and they were just, they were so expensive. And I did not want to be in debt and I was just wasn't interested in that. So I had found a jewelry shop that had um, bench jewelers on site and they needed a cashier. So I was like, you know what? I have some jewelry experience. I'm going to be a cashier and maybe I can work my way into apprenticeship with them. And that ended up happening and I, I enjoyed it, but it just like, it was better to make my own jewelry than it was to to like really just do it like that as a job. Right. I just wasn't, it, I, I didn't have the passion for it. Mm -hmm. You know, so my jewelry teacher had recommended like, hey, the local community college you're going to has a metal sculpting program, you should look into it. So yeah, I did that and then I saw that they had a welding program and I was like, I'm just gonna get my associates, I'll become a certified welder, you know, I'll get some experience. Like they had a small like CWI like classes right. and I thought that was really interesting because I was like, I see that like, you might not always want to stay in the shop atmosphere. Right. You might want to like move forward with it. So I was like, I think there's, I think there's a lot of opportunities for me to go forward. So in. you saw the pathways. Yeah. Wow. Yeah, okay. and I just knew that, you know, like I said, like I could still always make the art, you know, but I just wanted to be really good in my skill. It's so interesting. So you took a jewelry making class in high school. Where did you go to high school? Uh, I went to Stevenson in Livonia. Okay. Yeah. Okay. So yeah, they had a program. Um, it was really small. It was one of their electives and. I just never stopped taking it. I started at freshman year and I kind of became like a guinea pig for my um, jewelry teacher. So because I continued to take the classes with her, she would give me projects and like um, just different books to read up on stuff and say, hey, like can this beginning class or this like um, advanced class do a project like this? Like, can you figure it out? So I would do stuff like that for her, you know, in school and out of school. So I just, I liked it. It was fun. Interesting. It was smaller torches, but it still was fun. Did they have, um do they have tech classes? Do they have welding classes or auto shop? Yeah, or? I think it was more auto shop. And okay. honestly, I did. I hadn't. I didn't even know really about welding in high school. Like, I had no interest in it. I didn't really know much about it. I didn't recognize it for that. Um, but yeah, I think they had an auto shop. Like, yeah. but I didn't really know. I wasn't affiliated with it. You know, I was just in the jewelry yeah. section. Yeah. It's and then, sorry, go ahead. No, no. I was just saying, like, amazing what branding can do. Yeah. You know, if that had been called metal sculpture, maybe, maybe you end up <laughs> right. In the class. Yeah, maybe. Right, exactly. Well, then you said that the community college had metal sculpt had a metal sculpture program. Yeah, so um you could get like your certificate in metal sculpting and they had like um different level of classes as well. Okay. And they were like you learned the basics of welding, but you didn't right. really get into like the depth of it. You learned how to just do it, you know easily right For like putting sculptures yeah together. it wasn't a structural aspect right it was more about being creative and finding your creative path than it was about really understanding welding as a whole so your where did you go to community college schoolcraft schoolcraft which is also okay. in Livonia yes and schoolcraft is actually known for their welding program yeah they're known for their nursing program and their welding program um, they were actually in the same facility, but a couple years back, they actually went to, um, they took their welding department to a whole new facility. And it feels, I, I had checked it out once it was, you know, their new facility, and it felt more of like a shop, where before it felt like we were in a school, like we were actually in a school. And it was kind of weird, right? We would have nurses on one side and then <laughs> welders on the other. And it's that like, odd. <laughs> yeah, right? Like they would be doing whatever they could. And it was just weird to kind of see it. It didn't feel like we were totally in like um, like a shop atmosphere. Who needs PPE? We have nurses. Yeah. Exactly. <laughs> <laughs> all the nurses are practicing on the welding <laughs> students all the time. There go. Burns again. <laughs> <laughs> That's so interesting. Um, and then you did, so you did a, a associate's program at yep. the college then? Yeah, so I did associate's. I got like multiple certificates that came with it. And then yeah. um, I got certified through AWS there too um, because they were accredited facility. Oh, right. Yeah. Right. So. How did that compare to the jewelry torch thing? Was, did, did anything carry over Yeah, I at think all? I think the aspect of uh, like soldering carried over with TIG welding um, because like I, I was so precise. Everything's so small when it comes to jewelry. Right. Yeah. So that like that really carried over with TIG welding in the sense of like I was using a smaller torch, like it's a smaller flame. Right. Like you're looking at more of the details within it compared to like stick welding or flux core or, you know, like MIG welding, you know. So I think that really helped me, um, especially with a steady hand. Like you don't always need a steady hand, but it really helps. Right. Right. So, yeah, the jewelry carried over more into TIG welding. 
I could see how that would cross over really well. Josh actually has a very unsteady hand. The thing that has worked for him is he's so unsteady and shaky that he shakes kind of rhythmically. <laughs> and so that's what has made him a good TIG welder. I've been saying this is TIG welder really, really good. Yeah, he, he, yeah, he yeah. does beautiful TIG work, but I think that's why he has a um, issue that works for him. <laughs> wow. And it's, yeah, you just kind of see it all. A lot of my teachers had really unsteady hands and like made it very apparent, like you don't necessarily need it. It could it could make, be an advantage for you, right. right, if you do, but it's not necessary at every moment. You just, it's so interesting how you can even tell, like Josh's welds look different from my welds, look different from your welds. Like you can sort of read welds as a signature once mm -hmm. you get used to looking at them. Yeah. You know who did it. Just based on their own personal, um, you know, set of skills or how they've made their own adjustments to be comfortable. It's pretty interesting. Yeah. Yeah. yeah I would agree that your your weld is your signature for sure. Oh, definitely. Yeah. That's something I have learned. Mm -hmm. Especially, I've probably been welding the same amount of time as you mm -hmm. because obviously Josh has been doing it for years. But I um, finally said, okay, take me out to the shop. I want to yeah. learn. I really want to. I really want to get into this, and so um, he just set me up with the TIG welder, and I went at it for four and a half hours one day while he was cleaning the shop, and just he would just come over and look over my shoulder, give me a few tips, and um, but yeah, so I've probably been doing it the same so amount of time. You started to learn with TIG. I did. Wow. Yeah, that's kind I of. I did. How did yours? Your education started. um mine started with uh basically mig welding okay. and then stick and then tig was the last one because okay. i was i was a little nervous about that's it that's more common yeah <laughs> yeah i would say yeah that's more common so but i feel like you started off with the hardest one so maybe it made the other ones a little bit easier for you a little bit but i just feel i don't know i feel like i have so much more control with tig mm -hmm. so and most of the stuff that i'm doing in our shop you know i'm just practicing and making joints and yeah. amusement um, car amusement park ride exactly <laughs> yep yep mm -hmm. they don't need to be that safe <laughs> look for my signature on your next uh at your next county fair yeah. <laughs> so uh when you graduate what do you think you want to do and where do you end end up doing yeah so um i pretty much i graduated i went on a nice vacation after the few years that schooling took Good and then you. yeah it was great i loved <laughs> yeah. it i thought i was gonna end out um in california for a little bit of time but um i i didn't really care for the pay out there for yeah. welders it was a little bit it was lower right than right. michigan so i came back I just started looking for jobs and I didn't know what field I wanted to. Yeah. So I just was honestly applying to them all. And I was like, I'm just going to decide, you know, once I like get the offers. Right. Um, and actually, so I had gotten my first job right when COVID hit in March of 2020. Um, so a lot of the offers that I had gotten kind of dissipated because they were like, we're shut down. Right. right. Like COVID has sh shut us down. The state is kind of shut down at the moment. Um, but this one shop decided that they were going to transition what they were making into being essential. So they started making like um, for oxygen tanks, uh, like holders and um, holders for like hospitals and stuff and like different stuff for grocery stores. Like you saw those like plexiglasses right. that would be in frames. Oh, right. Yeah. So they started making stuff for like that. And they said, hey, we we need you. Like, will you take the position? And I was like, yeah, I'm like everywhere else kind of had, you know, dissipated right. for me just because of the circumstance so I took it and it ended up being one of the best ones for me um they transitioned you know after we started getting a little bit out of COVID they transitioned more into like custom fabrication um a lot for like universities <coughs> and like grocery stores a lot of that uh, it was more like art deco in my dependent in, in my opinion um that was still like structural based mm -hmm. so it kind of I had production base in there but like I wasn't really that that didn't really get my attention very right, much, right, right. right? Like it was more of the custom fab. But it was I stayed. part of the mix. Yeah, it was part of a mix, yeah. right? Like the production was keeping money flowing in, right. right? And this custom fab was just for them to get their name out there more, right? Yeah. And maybe get into that area a little bit more mm -hmm. for them. Um, and they had great equipment. They had a lot of CNC-based equipment. And um, at my schooling, we learned um, a little bit about coding and I had a CNC plasma class and I just right. thought it was really interesting. and. Um, I saw that they had that. 
along with like uh, CNC brake presses and a CNC um, Bridgeport mill. So I was like, I think this would be a good opportunity for me to kind of advance um, my skills in that area. Yeah. So. so you felt like you got a pretty well-rounded introduction to a lot of that stuff? Yeah, I feel like I, um, because at one point they had told me at my previous job that um, there was a person running each one of these machines. Right. So like the fabric or the welder was just really a welder. Right. Everybody yeah. was doing the prep work for them. Everybody was getting it ready and they were just welding out stuff, whether it's making the fixtures or finishing them. Um, so when I came in because of covid, you know, they had to get rid of a lot of employees and I took over everybody's position. So, yeah. So it went from like 40 people running all these machines right. to myself running these machines, which really helped me and my skill to progress really quickly. Um, which may not have been the circumstance at other places right. if I would have chosen um, to go there. So, yeah, and I, I, it was just a luxury to be able to use, like, heavy equipment like that, right. you know. It's so cool. I feel like I'm trying to think when I started, I'm always looking for, you know, people out in the industry who are doing really interesting things. And I think I started following you 2021, maybe. Yeah. And I was trying to figure out, I'm like, what is this girl doing? It, I don't think it was your shop, but she's in a shop and she's by herself. Yeah. And <laughs> she seems to be doing everything. Yeah. This is really interesting. <laughs> like, what is going on here? So, um, and then I think I just got in touch with you around Fabtech or before, a little before that. Yep. Yeah. Um, but uh, it, it's always interesting who just like comes up in the feed. And of course, I'm always looking for women welders um so it was really fascinating to see you in that shop by yourself building so many different things and what was really cool too is seeing that your employer was allowing you to post all the stuff from your yeah, job they were super cool with it they didn't have any yeah. problems i would hope that i was trying to get them to utilize it more in their marketing right. aspect because they lacked in that area, right? Because I wanted more custom fab work. I wanted right. big projects. That's what I like to do, right? right? Like it was fun doing that stuff. I would need a hand or two just to move some stuff. But other than that, like it was just me. Um, so I, I tried to get them to utilize, um, you know, the content that I was making. Because I didn't really have a social media presence until probably about 2021 when I started doing bigger builds, right? And I had started to really advance my skills within fabricating. Yeah. yeah. It's, a, it's such a natural a shop to lean on that mm -hmm. being that it's so visual i mean yeah. you go to any shop's web page and they're gonna have the gallery of work to get you know so you get an idea of what exactly they can do did did they not grasp it do you think no i don't think they did i yeah. i don't think they understood that like through everything that i was making which they were totally fine with right like right. It, it didn't take away from my work for the most part um that it was like creating sponsorships. It was creating, you know, other things like me meeting people, all these things that like social media had. I don't think they, I, I, I think that they weren't progressive enough in that way. Yeah. That they just couldn't grasp that. Did, so I was on your Instagram page uh, yesterday, kind of brushing up for this. Yeah. You, you're kind of doing some videos for your current employer too, right? Yes. Because I saw you reworking the welding area. Yeah. It's really, it's really, you know, kind of the opposite of what you see a lot of these, uh, for lack of a better phrase, or uh, welding influencer. You know what I mean? That it, it, it's really kind of nuts and bolts type stuff. Yeah. <laughs> and you're getting like a free pass into somebody's work environment. It's actually it's so cool. It, it really is. From I you love know, it. It, yeah. yeah. It, for people that don't understand what fabricating is, I mean, you're kind of showing them directly. Uh, a the setting be the product mm -hmm. and probably see the skills as well yeah i'm trying i'm i'm still figuring out like that aspect of it showcasing it now um you know i've signed a lot of ndas correct exactly. so, so I'm there's only you've been able to talk do you as have as you a have. security clearance no okay no okay so they they um most of them are heavy duty mechanics too i think at some point i might get to that point but at the moment okay. it's mainly them yeah, because I'm like, Josh can't, Josh can't post nothing, mm -hmm. no photos. They have certain areas where they can't take their phones at all or they have to put the tape over them. Right. Um, yeah, def is it is very little what he can share. So that's why I'm always so impressed that you can yeah. share so much of what you're working on. Well, so far. Yeah, so far. So far. Yeah. Yes. Once we get into these like new builds that it's from the ground up, right. there's nothing I can share from that, yeah. basically. Maybe a weld or two, but there's not much. 
yeah. it's like and i had talked to them about it like hey like you know i get sponsorships from this stuff like it's part of like just like what i like to do um and they were okay with it you know for the most part they just say no photos inside the truck yeah you know it depends on which one it is but there's stuff that's very like commercialized at this point that has been out for right. 10, 20 years. They're okay with, right? Because they take it out to like different events and like everybody's taking photos of it, right. Right? right? Like, so yeah, there's certain things I can share. There's a lot of things that I can't share, which is kind of like uh, slow down, I guess, my like content creation right. because of it, you know, and that we're like gearing up for a portion of like my builds that I won't be able to share. Mm -hmm. I just think it's so cool that we got to see this young woman lead you know of this military prototype contractor just setting up a workshop yeah getting ready for this you know big build that's so awesome i feel like that's just incredibly rare yeah and um i mean josh works with several i can't even tell you it's a few hundred guys you know who have um who could be welder fabricators they're all running you know metal shop um but they have one woman in their shop who is just hired. Yeah. So to see you getting this opportunity is yeah. awesome. How's that dynamic? And seeing you been? run with it. It's been great. I love yeah. the like the guys that I work with. Like they've all been um they've all been very helpful with me, especially because like they know a little bit in the welding area, right? But like that wasn't like that's not their skill. So right. like um it's been nice that they've been helping me out like in the mechanical side of it as well. Cause they can see that like I'm excited. I'm young, I'm excited. I have a lot to offer and yeah, they've been like mentors for me. That's awesome. Yeah. I don't feel like I, I took the job because I felt really good about it. Yeah. Um, and that's kind of why I took my last job. I felt really good about it as well. Like it was a good atmosphere. Right. Um, and there were, there's, there's no other women within the shop atmosphere. There are other, um, women that are engineers and stuff that I get to work with. So I'm like, okay, like, there's progression here right mm -hmm. like there's things like i i'm surrounded by a lot of good people um so yeah it, that was the main reason that i had taken the position and that um the my shop manager who i had interviewed with had said like this is your shop right like you're the only one you'll basically be touching all this equipment by yourself so make it how you want it right like to your fit whatever that right. is to you um, and I just immediately from the first day, I just did that. I was like, yeah. I'm ready to make it how I literally fit. on the forklift. <laughs> yeah, yeah, exactly. Yes. <laughs> I was pulling stuff out, and he was like, "What are you doing?" And I was like, "I'm, I'm reworking. I'm remodeling." Okay, yeah. I'm like, "It's gonna be good." I'm like, "I promise you." You know, and I, some of the engineers will come through my section, and they're like, "We know a woman's in the shop because everything's labeled and organized." <laughs> and wow. I laugh at that, and I'm like, "It's about you know effectiveness and productivity, right? Like that's right. what that's what I need in the shop. I need things to be by the mill or by the lathe, and I need all my like welding stuff related to that area as well." Is that something they cover during your welding education? No. Or is that just common sense? <laughs> no. <laughs> That's just something just that... Speaking, yes, sometimes it's just common sense. <laughs> if they did... And some people don't have that. Thank you. If they covered that, Josh missed those classes. <laughs> Burned. Just saying. <laughs> Somewhere or another, Josh is like, what am I talking about? <laughs> <laughs> oh, definitely. <laughs> no labels in our... <laughs> Yeah, is so, that something you introduced to your last job too? A little bit more organization? Yes. My last shop, it was it was one of the best shops that I had seen out of the ones that I had interviewed with, but it's still it was a mess. And I just could see like we just have things piled on top of each other. We have drawers that are like full of like sunflower seeds. And I was like, I wanna <laughs> use this. <laughs> like I wanna use this, you know? Yeah. Um and we had downtime because of COVID, right? There were slow moments and yeah. I was like, this is a time for me to work on the equipment, get it back going properly, clean it, because it's like your equipment's going to last longer if right. you take care of it, right? Yeah. And the same with, like, the shop. Like, it gets really messy when you're doing builds, but, like, there's there's a good time afterwards unless, like, you right. have another build going on right right after to, like, clean and organize and just know where things are. Or if things get lost, and then it's like you're just losing money by buying more yeah. stuff when you don't know where it is. Right. <laughs> <laughs> it seems like you have a comfort, like, in these environments. Did you grow up around people who uh, were maybe worked on cars or no like, wow. <laughs> I didn't so I like a lot of my family is like tradeswomen and men 
um, but like more in the carpentry and like tile working uh, and like okay. engineering aspect. Oh, working with hands. Though. Yeah, working with hands. Yeah, that's that's my, like my childhood was working with my father and like rough and fine carpentry. So that's oh, okay. like really got my passion into working with my hands. Gotcha. Um, but for some reason, metal just appealed to me more than like carpentry did. Yeah. Playing with fire. Yeah, mm -hmm. yeah. But these days I really enjoy carpentry um, with my dad, especially I appreciate it a lot more, mm -hmm. you know, and he's getting older. So it's like I'm really now starting to take everything he has to say into like account you know because it's like I, I want to be able to work on my house I could yeah. see some of those skills coming into play some of the knowledge you picked up from that as you were building your were you calling it your she shed yeah my she shed <laughs> yes. yeah she was building like a home shop space okay which is really cool so Josh and I have been trying to figure out our schedules just been mad but we want to come down and do a video in our yeah. personal home shop space uh, and share that with everybody so um, what are, are you mostly doing uh, personal art projects? Yeah. Then? Right now in the shop, I'm mainly doing stuff for my house because I'm like, awesome. <laughs> that's what is like, that's where it's keeping my passion to do welding outside of work. Right. Because like I'm doing a lot of modifications and working on cars and trucks at work that like I don't necessarily want to do repairs outside of it. You know, I want to work on things that are for myself and hopefully, you know, it starts to evolve that I can do, you know, functional pieces Maybe that are more art deco for other people at some point. But yeah, it's a lot for myself because I had bought a new house with my partner um, August of 2020 and um, it was a grandma house. So it needed a lot of work. Right. <laughs> so like there was a lot of renovation and remodeling that we were doing. And um, she had this small shed in the back. And that's where I decided, like, that's the perfect place for me to, you know, have my own home shop and do what I want there and, you know, enjoy the um, welding outside of work. Yeah. Where you really get to explore and be creative yeah. and mess up whatever you want to mess up without it costing your employer. <laughs> exactly. Right. Exactly. Right. Yeah. It's nice that you found that balance to where you can enjoy it while at the same time doing it every day. That, yeah. I don't know if other people find that. Well, yeah, because people say, you know, like, uh, especially as welders, people are always asking you, like, can you fix my boat? Can you fix my trailer? <laughs> oh my like, even even the engineers at my shop, and I just, like, politely decline. Like, I'm sorry, but outside of work, I do what makes me happy, yeah. right? Like, right. you can bring it into the shop. Like, I'll right. do it in the shop if it's cool with the shop manager. But outside of work, like, to keep that, like, my passion and that drive going for myself, like, I have to do things that I need, yeah. that I want, Right. And sometimes it is for other people, you know, but it's still like within like uh, my style of things. Right, right. You, what kind of advice would you offer somebody who is just getting involved in welding? And I think one of the things <laughs> that's very difficult is, you know, you hear a lot from the welding schools, come out and make all this money. Mm -hmm. And they get out and you've gone through it. You know, it, no one's throwing a, you know, a... a, a what do you call it? Armored truck full of money at you right when you graduate. <laughs> yeah. You know, but there are pathways. That, and I think you see that. What, what kind of advice would you offer to, like to a younger person? Um, I think that getting your certs is really helpful, especially as a female. It really helped me when I went into like my job interviews because it showed that I had like just this step up for right. myself, right? That I had like commitment and I was able to, um, you know, produce in like high stress situations. So I think that if you are in school to get those certifications, it's not always necessary. Right. Um, but I think it's super helpful. And then if you're not in schooling and you're just trying to like get into it, um, sometimes you just gotta go for the shop and it doesn't mean that you have to stay there, right? right? It's just get some experience and get out and get to a new place that you feel that fits, right? Your um, worth work ethic or like the environment for yourself. Right. Um, and Take everybody's, you know, advice and it might not always be the best, but like there's a lot of good mentors out there. Mm -hmm. um, and most people are really willing to help you if like you're willing to put the work into it. Right. Right. Like ask the questions, you know, and like it's OK to fail. Right. Like there's so many times that I failed at the beginning that I was just like, this is this is what it's like. Right. Like because like unless you like fail, you'll never get to that like that master. Right. Mm -hmm. Like that master aspect and your skill and everything. So. Yeah, mainly just it's okay to fail, you know. Yeah. Keep the drive going, whatever that is, you know, and make sure that you're happy with the place that you're at. Yeah, make the most of the opportunity. Yeah, you. make the most of the opportunity, definitely. Is there anybody who you, um, you know, do you have a, a particular mentor or even people that you follow on social media or online or 
um, that have really influenced your welding path or who you kind of go to for encouragement or? Yeah, so um, I've actually found like a really great group of women welders. Um, and it really, that's really been helpful just talking about, right, like what industry is like um, and kind of how they got into it. And um, so the welders, which are um, Letty and Rachel, they're the ones who created that nonprofit. And it was uh, just the basic, like it's a classes for women, just the basis of it, like the basics of how to start welding. And um, they did an event out in Arizona and they had just like contacted a bunch of us, you know, through social media and said, hey, do you guys all want to come out and say an Airbnb and we can get to know each other. And we all went out there and like from there, it's like we've all just been able to like connect and like keep with each other. And like when we need advice, like talk to them. So, yeah, it's a lot of the um, I think there's a lot of great fabricators out there. Right. Um, but um, yeah, the like the women welders really have like they just stand behind each other really well. And they've been really helpful with just like um, job opportunities, you know, just like um, influencer opportunities as well and just supporting each other in that way. So I look up to a lot of them for the most part. I love the women welder community. Yeah. I have so many amazing friends and I'm not even like a career welder. Um, I'm, you know, I, I love the industry. I love seeing what women are doing, but there is, it, it's incredibly powerful to see what these women are doing in community, what, you know, whether they're in the same area, you know, geographical area, area or not, like mm -hmm. you say, you know, we just got together out in Arizona. Um, uh, the power of that just seems to, and the influence of that just seems to radiate outwards. And I see how important that community is. I belong to a few groups on Facebook and those groups too are so encouraging to one another and they're, they're always helping each other. Um, you know, like I'm struggling at this job or can you look at my welds and tell me what I need to do? And um, it's interesting because I don't know that there's guy welding groups like that. Yeah, <laughs> that's a good point. You will yeah, suck. Yeah. <laughs> you ain't good at this. Oh my yeah. gosh, right? Egos are hilarious in welding. I'm sure that comes up in, in you know, in circles of women too. But um, just the, I don't know, the camaraderie is so awesome. I love being a part of it. Um, you know, just looking for people to share the platform with or, or whatever it might be. But I've been so inspired. And I mean, even you being so young and young in the industry, like I'm inspired by that. And I love stories like yours. That's what, you know, really fuels what, what I do, what Josh does. And um, uh, just getting to share, share these stories and um, help other, you know, other people get excited about the industry. Yeah. 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 So, um yeah, a few others that I really like are, I know that you guys recently did it um, uh, on your guys' magazine. You, I, I was just reading about Ivan. I think Ivan's a really fantastic welder, right? And yes. artist. I think he's really- He's he, so talented. He's super talented. Um, so nice. Yeah, and a lot, and I found Lou because of Metal Shop Masters, yeah. and he is super skilled and a very smart guy. I mean, he can run machines like I've never seen, he's you know? Yeah, so I, I, those are two people that I'm able to talk to and just like have good conversations with, you know, that relate to like, you know, art and welding as well. Um, and then Pacific Art, um, Pacific Arc um, TIG welding. He's a guy from out in Canada, but he's really smart. He's done a lot of aluminum welding most of his um, career. And now he makes these like crazy, like 3D, like um, TIG welds out of aluminum and they're like eyes. And they're Ooh. just, they're very spiritual looking, but they're really neat. Like he just cool. really manipulates, you know, stainless steel and, and aluminum. And I appreciate guys like that. Cause it's like, they're, they're using their, um, you know, skills and talent within an art aspect, yeah. um, but still structurally based, yeah. you know? So it's progressive. What, what have been some of the challenges that you've encountered during your uh, early part of your career? Um, I think uh, setting boundaries with people was kind of a big thing that I had to learn because I, I got into, right, like I was 18 when I had started just right. even metal sculpting. So it was hard for me to understand what a boundary meant like within like a professional aspect, yeah. right? Because I just wanted to be buddy buddies with everybody um, and just kind of go with the crowd sometimes. But I realized that like setting boundaries was really important for me to get like the respect that I needed as like 
a professional, especially a woman in a male dominated field. Um, so boundaries are really hard for me to gather. And it took a couple of years for that to like really like set up. Right. And not let people kind of like walk over me right. or kind of like um, make like make me feel minimalized for, you know, just growing and not knowing everything from the beginning. Right. right. No, I it, it came into my head when you were mentioning the guy wanting his trailer fixed. And as a the boundary. To, but to be able to, to say <laughs> that is a very mature thing. It is. You know, without. I'm impressed. Without, so, so without like totally pissing off the person asking and yet still being able to say politely no and kind of maintain, as you say, your boundaries. You know, the, the thing that I uh, am talking with you is you, there's a certain level of maturity and you probably put in three years already kind of learning how to work in a workplace. But you know, it can be so difficult for a young person in general, much less as you describe, uh, you know, a, a woman in a male do not do, denominated a male dominated <laughs> uh field so it, it's you know there's so many so many things that young people have to learn about being in a workplace and it, it, it's you know something as simple as that i think it applies i mean obviously from your perspective as a woman but i think that that that's a lesson for a lot of people yeah like uh one of the mechanics at my shop right now He's super smart, right? And everybody goes to him to fix their vehicles. Yeah. But he's getting exhausted from right. it, right? And I told him, I'm like, you got to set the boundaries and just tell him no. Like, I'm sorry, but like, I understand that I can fix it, but like, this is this is my time, yeah. right? To do what I need to do for myself. Um. So yeah, and just like, you know, shop, most shops in the welding industry, it's not like, there are professional aspects, right? There are very professional shops, but like most of the time, like, it's like, you know, it's welding, so you're, yeah. you're you're doing whatever you want, and you know you're you're messing around, you're pulling pranks on people. So <laughs> to keep that like professionalism was like kind of difficult to learn what what it is to be a professional welder, yeah. right? In shops that are not necessarily um, like that high of standards when it comes right. to that. Right. Do you feel like you can make a long term career as a welder, or do you feel like your interest may take you? Uh, elsewhere to explore kind of different paths that may slightly uh, kind of uh, go off that welding path? I think that I'll stay within the welding industry. I don't know if that'll move up to becoming like a CWS or a CWI. Mm -hmm. um, that's what I hope for. That's what I'm looking for, you know, within like a five to 10 year plan for myself. Um, but I definitely feel like there's just so much to learn in welding and there's just a lot of opportunities to offer one. Um, even in like the like the sales of welding, right? Like people have really good careers in it and they go to really fun functions and then, you know, they're still involved in it, you know? So I think that I'll stay within the welding industry. I don't really see myself like veering off from that. Um, I'm just not sure what aspect that it'll be. Yeah. You think you'll keep your hand in kind of actually welding, whether it be as a, a professional or maybe during your off time. Yeah, I think that I'll always like, I'll always be welding. Love yeah, I love it and it's fun. And it's just like, it's a cool thing to tell people like, hey, <laughs> I'm a good welder, right? Like yeah. I know how to weld, you know? And um, yeah, and it's just, it there's there's a fun aspect to it. Um, and it's exciting and thrilling, you know? It's not, not everybody gets to say those things. Um, and I just like working with my hands in that way, you yeah. know? So I don't see myself like not like continuing welding, whether it's at my own home shop or continuing to stay at, you know, a shop. I have a question. Uh, I know we're talking a lot about welding, but on your uh, Instagram page, you have a lot of videos of you working on a press break and kind of working through the pain points of trying to trick the press break to yeah. bend the plate the certain way. What was that transition like, learning how to use a press break and kind of like two benders? Yeah, so um, it was pretty difficult at first because I really didn't have a lot of experience um, f like working machinery in a fabric, like a um, working machinery in a fabricating aspect like that. Um, and my assistant plant manager at my last job, he was in my position for a while. So he actually helped mentor me in those ways, you know, also let me fail a lot. Right. And was like, the only way you're going to learn is if you fail. So um, I just started doing projects and started making up prints on my own that just kind of look like something that um, would be complicated for the machine. Um, and just testing those abilities of it, you know, because um, it's, it, you can't always buy tooling, you know, when you have a job that needs to get done right away. So uh, it was working with that aspect of like, how, yeah, how am I gonna manipulate 
this uh, machinery to get what I need out of it for this moment exactly. Um, and a lot of it, I use a lot of math. I didn't think I was going to use so much math and I didn't think I would be so good at it, right? Like I just, I wasn't so interested at that point. But then you get into like a passion and then you get into a lot of CNC based machines and it's like, it's like there's, it's all equations, right? Like the equation will get you where you need for the most part. Um, so yeah, it was just a lot of practice um, of just doing my own stuff and then a lot of different jobs that required me to just, you know, get it done and move forward with the next one. We're literally going to take that little section about math. I'm going <laughs> to share it with my wife and we're going to, we're going to build up math, math uh, fans out there. <laughs> well, your, your wife's a math teacher. Yes. Right? Yes. There you go. Oh, for some context. Oh. Yeah. So that's very important. Yeah. Thank you for sharing that yeah. point. It really is. You've you made know? the, uh, you've made her day, even though she's not here. <laughs> all the math teachers across the world. <laughs> thank you. Right. All the kids who say, I'll never use that math. Well, I mean, there's enough videos of that yeah. and enough like comedian bits. So. <laughs> there really are. Oh my goodness! I was, I honestly, I was a terrible math student. Yeah. And I realized later in life, I mean, literally, I always got all A's, and then I'd get like a C minus in any sort of math. And yeah, I kept trying, and I kept taking. <laughs> higher level math classes thinking that the harder it got I was going to get better at it, it. Might, yeah. <laughs> yeah later in life I realized though if it would have had color if if numbers had color association yeah. um that I would have done a lot better so that is how later in life I became much better at math when I needed it was color association which is really strange but that's how my brain works yeah. never be afraid of C's <laughs> yeah. there's, there's a saying in my part of the family C's get degrees yes. so. <laughs> that is Oh, yeah, yeah, that yeah. is true. Yeah. Yes, yes. <laughs> We've even lowered that sometimes for occasional class where D's would get degrees, but we want to <laughs> want to shoot a little bit higher than that. Dan, I rolled that through college. So. <laughs> <laughs> oh my gosh, so, there's I love always it. that. So, did you welcome that once the work in the press break, or was it something you were anxious about? No, I actually welcome it um, because I wanted to get better in that area, right? I felt smarter. I had more confidence and I knew that um, I would be more successful going into, you know, further into my career if I could just, you know, nip it in the butt and start learning it now and, you know, find the fun out of it. Um, and that's basically what happened. You know, I was doing a lot of programming um, and operating of these machines and it was like I had to learn it. Um, but it was, it was fun because there was like, there was an end result for me that I could physically see yeah. Where right? Like when you're in schooling, there's, there's really no end result of a project that you're right. seeing with it. Um, so yeah, I guess my brain associated in that way. Like I could see my end result and know like, yeah, I got this to the exact print that it needed to be. Do you have any processes that you really want to learn that you haven't spent a lot of time on or like a dream project? I'd like to get better at TIG welding, especially stainless. Um, my last job, I didn't, I did a lot of aluminum TIG welding um, and not as much stainless. So that's but like- That the, takes a lot of skill. Yeah. And that's the one area that I would say that I lack in, um, like at least the one material. Um, I think I'm okay in it, but I think like I have a ways to go before that. Come hang out in our shop. Okay. There you go. <laughs> you- <laughs> Let's figure that out. Okay. Let's come like come and we'll do a stainless day. Yeah. Yeah. I love that. <laughs> It'd be so fun. <laughs> yeah, so it's like um, you know, it's kind of it's not a specialized material, but like not every shop uses it, right? Like right. it's a more expensive material to use for a lot like Definitely. sanitary reasons, right? Things of such. Um, so yeah, I'd I'd like to like move further in that for myself, you know, for my own ego, I think. Yeah. You think you'd explore metal sculptures once you maybe finish working on the house and doing stuff yeah for, for the house yeah i would like to get back into that mm. um right like renovating a house kind of takes over yeah everything. it's a thing yeah oh, it it's takes a lot over of your work. life yeah and then you have a real job and, and then yeah, yeah. <laughs> exactly and just like adjusting to a new routine of like living with somebody and like i've like this is my first time living outside of my like parents house so it's just so different to like have a new routine and um, have more responsibilities right so just trying to find that um and i wake up a lot earlier than i have to for like i had to for work now so it's again it's like okay like i gotta i gotta find this routine for myself um and just like where life is still happy right that i'm not just like going through the days and not enjoying things right. 
you know, while I'm at it. So yeah, I'd like to move back into a little bit more of metal sculptures. I hope that comes within the next six months for myself. Um, but yeah. Yeah. Well, congrats on the new gig and uh, kind yeah, of figuring awesome. it out. I don't know if you figured it all out, but not yet. But that's okay. You're I don't good. know. That's I think right? It's fun. I think I got 30, 40 years on you, and I think you're ahead of me in terms of trying to figure it out. Uh, <laughs> it feels like it. Right? <laughs> uh, do we have any questions, Gareth, Brandon? I'm no not more, looking that way. No more further questions. I'm looking directly at yeah. you right now, even though I'm not. You can look at me. <laughs> Is it true? How do we get yelled at by our Brandon Geyer, technical producer, director, superior? Anyone uh, watching this? We'll see. It looks like we're talking to each other, but oh, that's it's good. very awkward talking to your ear. There you go. <laughs> uh, I, I didn't wrestle, so I have still good looking ears. Uh, so on this great episode of the, well, it was until the past two minutes. Uh, thank you, Jessica Considine, for visiting with us today. I enjoyed the conversation. Me too. Thank you. Well, where, where can we find you on the socials? So um, on Instagram, I'm at Sculpted Roots and at Rooted Welding. That's my newest one for my newest job. Um, and then I'm on TikTok at, at Sculpted Roots. Awesome. And uh, thank you, Dollar, for helping out today. Of course. My pleasure. Thank you, Josh, Welcome. for contributing, even though he wasn't here. I felt like <laughs> yes. he was just going to get a co host credits. <laughs> yes. He should. <laughs> uh, you can get the Fabricator podcast anywhere you get podcasts, Walmart. Hey Mart, Spotify. Hey Mart. Where else? We're in Detroit. I know Troy. God bless. Uh, yeah. Let's see. And R. rate, R. review, subscribe. And if you have a, a question or an idea for a show or a mean comment about my hosting skills, <laughs> send it to podcast at thefabricator dot com. Uh, anything else? You got it. Oh, that seems like we wrapped it up. All Thank right. you. Added Kmart, so it was great. Yeah. Kmart. Moment of silence. All right. Thank you and goodbye. <laughs> <laughs> the Fabricator Podcast is a production of Fabricators and Manufacturers Association, located in Elgin, Illinois. The show is hosted by Dan Davis and the staff of FMA Communications. The podcast is produced by Gareth Slager and recorded and edited with the help of Brandon Geyer. Sales support provided by Andy Flando. Additional production support by Elizabeth Gavin, Dana Weicker, Mary Diamond, Mike Owens, and me, Sarah Spring. Thank you for listening.